Hello and welcome to the fourth video in the Bubble Beginners Program series. In this video, we will go over front-end workflows. So what is a front-end workflow? Simply put, these are all of the actions that happen right away on your user's front-end or the client side. As soon as a logic or condition is met, this workflow or action within the app itself will run. It does not necessarily have to be a user initiated action or a logic. It can also be an app specific logic or condition. So just remember that front end workflows happen right away. You can't necessarily delay them to happen in 10 minutes, right? And they run on your user's browser or device. In the next video, we'll go over backend workflows, which is a little different because you can schedule them to run in the future. But just understand that front end workflows will only run right away and on your user's front end or client side. So when you think about a workflow, you can think about this being the logic or actions that occur for your application. So instead of describing it, let's go ahead and just build out our first workflow. For almost any application, you'll have a sign up workflow. You want to allow your application to allow users to sign up. So let's go ahead and build that out. When we think about a user signing up for our application, we can have Google login, Facebook login, Twitter login, all of those nice social logins, but almost certainly we will also provide a functionality to sign up with email. So that's what we'll build out in this example. So we'll drag in an input form here. And our placeholder here will be email. So whenever we're signing up a user, we need to collect their email. So for that, the content format will be email. Now, of course, we also want to say this input should not be empty because we are required to capture the email from the user. We'll quickly copy and paste this input and now we'll have the placeholder say password. So here we're allowing the user to choose their own password as well. And the content format in this case will be password. And the same thing here, this input should not be empty. Now in terms of signing up user to bubble, those are really the only two fields that you need. So let's go ahead now and add a button below. And we'll call it sign up. So now that we have our three visual elements that we need, we can now click Add Workflow. And now you see it here in your Workflow tab. So for all actions that happen on your application, in your Bubble application, they will all be here in this Workflow tab. Now, the structure of a workflow is, again, it's a conditional statement in the sense that something has to be true for that workflow to run. So in this case, every workflow starts with when. So for this example, it's when the button sign up is clicked. Now, what should the application do? What are the steps that need to run and occur for this specific workflow event? So in the first case, we'll go under account and we'll say sign the user up. So as you can see, we'll drag this over. What Bubble is requiring from us is an email and a password. So what we need to do is take the values that the user types in on their front end, on their UI, and pass that to Bubble. So here for the email, we'll say input email value. Now for password, if we go back here, let's just quickly go here. We have it titled input email as well. So let's change this to say input password. And again, this is another reason why it's important for you to name your elements correctly. So let's go back to our workflow. And now for password, we'll say input passwords value. And that's really it. So at this point in time, when the user fills out that email input, that password input, and clicks sign up, Bubble will go ahead and create a user account and what this really means under the hood is that it's creating a new instance 
of this user data type, right? So as soon as the user clicks sign up, we will have a new entry here with that new user. Okay, so now we have sign the user up. It's creating that new entry. Now, of course, because this is a user that we're signing up, we can collect more information and actually store it in our database. So for example, we have first name here in our database as a data field. So if we want, we can go ahead and just quickly copy and paste this email input. Let's drag it up to the top. And here, let's say placeholder first name and the content format will be text. So now if we go back to workflow, we have first name and we'll say input first names value. So now we're also saving the user's first name into the database as well. Now, if we take a look at the other fields that we have, you see we, here we have date of birth. Does it necessarily make sense to collect the user's date of birth right away as they sign up? Probably not. We can defer this to later on in the user journey. Once they've signed up, navigated to the user dashboard, maybe they look in their settings, there we can go ahead and collect their date of birth. So you don't have to collect everything in your database, right, for the user data type right away. You can definitely leave some items blank. So for signing up a user, it makes sense. We really only care about maybe their name, their email, and of course a password, and then we create that user account. Now, at this point in time, the user is, you know, signed up to our platform, our application, and they are also logged in as well. So a workflow can have more than one step associated with it. So the logical next step here is when we sign the user up, let's go ahead and send them an email as well. So the to field here, because the user is already signed up, we'll say we're sending it to the current user's email. The sender name can be my app, subject can say welcome, and the body can say, Hel hello, welcome to my application. Awesome. So now every time a user signs up, right, we're going to create a user account for them. It'll automatically log them in. And then we will also send them an email as well. Now, if you remember from our second video when we talked about UI design, we said that for visual elements, we have conditional statements. The cool thing is for workflows, you have conditional statements as well. So you see here, send an email. Here at the very bottom, we see only when. So here we can say only when current user's first name is Bob. Okay, it probably sounds ridiculous, but in this case, we are only going to send an email if the user's first name is Bob. For everyone else that goes through this workflow and signs up for our application, if their name is not Bob, we will skip step two in this workflow. So as you can see, you can start adding conditional statements to specific steps within your application, or you can add a conditional statement to the event as a whole. So here we can say only when current user's first name is not Bob. Now, actually, this doesn't make sense because they're not logged in. So in this case, we might want to say input first name's value is not Bob. So now this workflow will run when button sign up is clicked and that input first name, so in our design tab, this input right here. If that value of that input is not Bob, we will run this workflow. Okay, for anyone that signs up and their name is Bob, we just won't run this workflow. Meaning, if I have Bob in this first name field and I click sign up, nothing is going to happen. We are just going to skip over this whole workflow event. So when you start thinking about this, why would I want you know this not to run in certain instances and it for it to run in other instances? Well, let's just copy this workflow event, paste it here. And now we can say when the first name value is Bob, maybe we want to sign up the user 
and send them a different email, right? Hello, you are Bob, so now this email is going to look different. Or maybe our whole workflow is different when the user's name is Bob versus when their name is not Bob, right? So adding conditional uh, statements or conditional expressions on workflow events will make them not run everything. And then adding conditional statements on specific steps in the workflow will only make that step run or not run. Okay, so definitely take a look and play around with conditional statements. This is how you really build complex and customized workflows for your application. Now we have send email here. Let's just delete all of our expressions. Oops, we clicked the wrong button there. So we'll clear this out. Let's just delete this one here. So button sign up is clicked. We'll sign the user up and we will also send them an email regardless who they are. So now step three, let's say navigation. We're gonna say go to page and the destination will be dashboard. So the user signs up, let's just say on our index page or landing page, right? If we don't navigate them somewhere, we're going to create an account and they're just going to stay on the page. So the better thing to do is navigate them automatically to another page, right? Kind of like a logged in page in a sense. So here, once the user signs up, we'll also automatically create them an account, we'll log them in, we'll send them an email, and then we'll go to the page dashboard. One thing to note as you're building out workflows, going to a specific page will always be the last item in a workflow. It doesn't mean you have to have navigation take place for every workflow. What it does mean is if you want to navigate the user to another page, it basically has to be the last item, right? The last step in your workflow. If we drag this out to step two, you can see we actually have an error here. Go to page dashboard must be the last action in the workflow, which makes sense, of course. So that's it for front end workflows. Highly suggest you create some very simple workflows to begin with. Make sure you're linking them to, you know, the, either the database or the front end, right? Grabbing inputs from your users. Try to build in conditional statements into the workflow event itself as a whole, as well as the independent steps. And then lastly, take a look, take some time and take a look at all of these tabs that you have here. You have specific workflow steps for a user's account, for navigation, for data. So for example, we haven't actually created any data here, right? We could also say data things, create a new thing. In this case, what a thing is, it's an instance or an entry in your database. So we will select the user type, or excuse me, the data type. So for example, maybe we want to automatically create a seller every time someone signs up. So here we're creating a new item in our database called seller, right? An instance of a seller. Data things, we can also make change to a thing. And we'll get to this later on as well. You can send an email, you can do payments, you have all of these. So highly recommend you take a look through all of these and just try to build some very easy workflows to begin with. Don't try to make it too complex in the start. So thank you for watching. This was a video on front end workflows, very introductory. In the next video, we'll go over back end workflows.